Dzień dobry Państwu, witam Państwa serdecznie. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Karolina Lewicka, journalist uh, for uh, Talk FM Radio. I will facilitate the discussion on whether we need new constitution after the rule of the law and justice and after the pandemic. Our distinguished panelists, Barbara Nowacka, MP from the Civic Coalition, Gabriela Morawska-Stanecka, the left-wing party's uh, uh, Senate member, and Professor Adam Bodner, former ombudsman. Currently the dean of the Department of Law of the SWPS University. Previously, the law and justice was uh, talking a lot about uh, uh, the Constitution, and we uh, are now considering whether a new act uh, is necessary. Uh, it was previously prepared during the rule of uh, Lekarczyński, um, and it the president, the president Andrzej Duda uh, had the initiative of the constitutional referendum, but the party did not allow him to uh, fulfill this intention. Later on, we heard that we, we would have constitution that would um, ensure the rule of law and independence. Rafał Trzaskowski yesterday said that if you that his father told him to run away from anybody telling uh, that they are a real Paul, a real Catholic. So I think we should read it uh, in the same way in the case of uh, Kartrinsky. So the question related to the new constitution, will we really need it after the rule of the law and justice? Uh, it's all about motivation. When we talk about uh, the main motivation, uh, is the disappointment. The institution we have had uh, has not survived. It was so easy to break it, to breach it, uh, and since the fuses did not operate as they should, perhaps we should make a more robust constitution that will survive if uh, another group of barbarians invades us. Good morning. Thank you very much for your invitation. It's uh, very nice to see all of you here. I have different uh, motivations. Disappointment is one thing, but it's not uh, disappointment with constitution, but by uh, the authorities that came and broke the promises. Uh, the fathers and few mothers on the, on, of the constitution assumed that the ruling parties would uh, like to obey the constitution and maintain stable democracy in Poland. Nobody expected that a group of people would come for him such uh, values as uh, rule of law, democracy would mean nothing. But for me, it uh, all dates back to pre-COVID and pre-law and justice times. For a long time, we, uh, have, we have heard that uh, we would have to uh, modify it slightly when uh, entering the Eurozone. The Constitution does not grant uh, women's rights, such as uh, the right for safe legal abortion. The Constitution does not regulate some issues that had not existed in the public discourse 20 or 30 years ago, such as equality for non-heterosexual couples. Social justice, which is only a slogan, but in the Constitution, you, it can find its place. But according to what you say, I gather you think about modification or uh, writing a new Constitution. Since we changed, it, since we say that the world has changed, it uh, has changed for the USA as well, and they don't change their Constitution; only make amendments.
I am uh, an IT specialist, so I'll be using different language than you, uh, specialists in law. Whether these would be amendments or reconstruction of the system referring to uh, institutions is not my uh, role. I don't want politicians to write a constitution in Poland. We have the lawyers. And the lawyers can point out a number of mistakes. It should be done by people who experience the weakness of the Constitution, who understand political life, but can take a broader perspective on how the world can change. We have politicians and lawyers uh, uh, in one person. I know that the Constitution of the Republic of Poland has to uh, correspond to the challenges of the Republic of Poland in the 21st century. It is not only globalization and large crises, crisis, but uh, implementation of new technologies. They should be protected. Uh, they should protect human rights and freedom. If you ask, are we satisfied by the current constitution? No, it's not satisfactory for anybody who is concerned about human rights. Can we amend it? Yes, we can. But uh, so far, law and justice has disturbed a lot of uh, institutions. Are there such powerful people to who will be able to reconstruct the power of the Constitutional Tribunal. For me, the Constitutional Tribunal uh, for many years will not be as strong as it used to be. Yeah, reconstruction is a, a long-term process. Yes, it's about a long-term planning, and let's hope that politicians think this way too. You mentioned two uh, important topics that I would like to elaborate. I would like to elaborate on and refer to in the discussion with uh, the other speakers. You said that it assumes some goodwill. Isn't it possible to secure the constitution for it to survive uh, when challenged by people who have bad will? Uh, there was an example. Uh, a young couple is uh, moving into a new flat and uh, the wife says, one lock, not enough. So uh, suddenly they decide to add uh, a second and a third. So you could uh, install 10 locks, but if somebody would like to break into the flat, they would always find a way. Professor, first and foremost, thank you very much for your uh, invitation. I would like to uh, to express my solidarity with Judge uh, uh, Adam Slakiewicz, who was suspended by the Minister of uh, Justice, and the disciplinary chamber was operating in the same way in the case of uh, Judges Tuleja Morawiec. Uh, mm, so we must not forget it. It's another instrument to. Uh, humiliate judges. Thank you. Ladies and uh, gentlemen, the facilitator referred to Professor Wyszykowski's uh, personality. He is my master. I learned constitution from him. And I remember that when I became a student in 1996, I went to a constitution he organized on uh, constitutional cultures. What was it about? It was not about the content of constitution, but whether we as the society have a culture that uh, allows for relevant and fair treatment of the constitution, understanding what the tripartite uh, power means, the rules of democratic state and the rule of social justice. Constitutionalism is created throughout the years. This is not a process which can be created with a document, however good it is. When we 
talk about such topics as whether we need a new constitution, it's like looking for the holy grail in the public debate. It's like uh, uh, 500 plus benefit. Uh, let's think about something different and all of a sudden the public imagination will be stimulated. So some people think that a new constitution, a draft of the constitution will be excellent, will gain social support, and then the new authorities will come and will be able to repair our everyday reality. So do you exclude the possibility of its being the founding myth? It could be, but if not supported by the actual work on the level of municipalities, communes, it would be a document that does not reach social reality. When I look at the statement of our debate, Constitution after law and justice and after COVID, it's rather about how we should explain to people living in small towns, in villages, why they really need constitutional rules, why they need uh, these rules. We have to explain why the freedom of movement and other freedoms and liberties were limited or restrained. We also have to explain how uh, different institutions, such as uh, martial law, can be used. Uh, why? Uh, what is the importance of the European Union? They do not exclude one another. I got involved in a uh, tour, uh, tour de Constitutia, as we call it. Uh, I'm really sorry that I couldn't make it to home and to other towns. Uh, there is not, not enough time to participate in them all. It's the work done by uh, Kinga, Dagmara, and Robert Hoida, but it's the work which should be done by political parties and other organizations, uh, trade unions, and all of those who believe in integrational values of the Constitution and in the Constitution being capable of bringing us together. So perhaps on the conceptual level, it is worth doing it, but it should not substitute uh, the bottom-up work. I do agree with uh, Basha that Constitution should be modified. It applies to Article 18 on uh, couples, I think it should allow marriages of people of the same sex uh, or another article which should be extended to clearly define uh, what discrimination is and what prerequisites should be used. Uh, we also heard the proposal to lower the age at which people could vote in the election to 16. There are also other aspects related to combating climate change. It all should be taken care of, but on this stage, we should uh, use what uh, Professor Wojciechowski was talking about. There is a great interview with him in uh, Pismo magazine, uh, published three, four months ago. He says that constitutionalism is like a grease which uh, m ensures smooth operation of all machineries. If we don't use such grease, the machinery does not operate as it should. And we don't have such a grease. It has been washed out due to negligence uh, of the Constitution, at least on the level of human imagination. We should be convinced that we need such grease. What about if we stick to a new act of law, why would we need new constitution? What is the point in writing a new constitution? What effect would we like to achieve? Writing a new constitution for constitution's sake makes no sense. We are not capable of introducing the fuses that will protect us against uh, violation of the Constitution, because it's all a goodwill of the, rule of the authorities. So 
Since Constitution ensures our rights and freedoms, so perhaps the new Constitution could secure it even better and uh, provide a stronger mandate to democracy and create stronger institutions that the modern state is based on. Before I answer, I would like to thank you for inviting me here. I'm really happy to participate in Freedom Games uh, in a panel uh, shared by such distinguished guests and uh, you as the facilitator. Professor Eva Wantowska, who is a great authority in this area for me, said that uh, we had quite a good constitution, but we had to know how to implement it, how to use it. She compared it to a good carpenter. If a good carpenter gets an old shabby hammer, they would still do their work. But if you give a perfect hammer and excellent material to somebody who is not skilled, they will damage the product. So that's the answer to the question whether we really do need new constitution. The answer is not, but some amendments uh, are necessary, such as in the case of Article 227 about the National Bank of Poland, in order to be able to introduce euro in Poland. However, how can we explain to the people, to the constitutional patriots who since December 2015 have been going to the streets to defend the constitution that actually it's obsolete, not as it should be, that we should write new constitution? No legal regulation will protect us against constitutional barbarians. Constitution does not have its own army, its own police. It's strong with the power of the citizens who are able to defend it in the streets and through protests. Let me quote another authority. So Andrzej Żeplewski used to say, uh, used to remember um, giving advice on constitutions in different countries. When in Mongolia, some people asked him about the provisions of, uh, for example, uh, including a, a ban on coup d'etat, he said, yes, that was an absurd. If there is a coup d'etat, we abolish the Constitution. Professor uh, Marek Safian said that it's possible to in, uh, include a provision that Constitution must not be changed at night. But what for? I don't agree with uh, this statement that our Constitution does not have enough fuses to protect it. It does, and it has many of them, but they all operate with when tripartite power is ensured. However, it happened that on the one hand, the Lauren Justice uh, gathered the whole power in its all in, in its hand, and then using the salami uh, practice, started to chop it. Uh, from uh, the Constitutional Tribunal through to courts, but it did not go completely as planned. The uh, authority is completely demoralized. So it's not only about taking over the whole power, but uh, the people are cynical and demoralized. Consequently, they are not interested at all in observing the law, but in using it as an instrument to achieve their own objectives. No constitution, no regulation will guarantee that it will never happen again in the future. In the future, we should consider what to do in order to get social legitimacy of the constitution in order for the citizens to do what they do, what they are doing now, but there are too few of them. In 2016, 2017, people were uh, going to the streets uh, in big crowds. Then 
gradually they were smaller groups of people because people don't feel what they need constitution for. People in small towns, in villages, in communes have to feel that constitution is for them, that this is the guarantee of their safety and security as well as freedom. So education and working on the constitutional mandate if I could say a statement for the 21st century, it would not be a new constitution, but modern constitutional patriotism and civic upbringing. In the 21st century, it should be, we should have a constitutional patriot, but this is somebody whom we have to create answering one question or even more questions, which are more difficult. How it happened that there is such huge public approval of breaking the law. How did it happen that so many people accepted violating the Constitution? When the president violated or breached them for the first, for the second time, people protested. There were 13 cases like that, and nobody is shocked. Perhaps it's being impartial, it's unexpressed approval. So we have to uh, answer the question, what, may, what made people accept law and justice with its statement and do what they are doing without any major resistance? So we also have to answer the second question, what to do to avoid the situation in the future. And I can ensure that even if you have the best constitutional rules, uh, you cannot guarantee that there won't be another law and justice party. So you are saying no to the new constitution. You are talking about amending it. So uh, let's uh, Let's for a moment stop thinking about this new constitution. Uh, MP Nowatska was saying that we should talk about women's uh, issues. Professor Bodna was saying about the rule that uh, the state uh, should uh, protect uh, relationship uh, between women and men, and uh, we should add some provisions uh, to, to protect uh, uh, LGBT people. So maybe we should uh, add uh, ban the prohibition of discrimination uh, due to sexual equality. You have been mentioning uh, a rule about the central uh, bank to introduce euro. So probably if we have other speakers, they would have uh, ideas for other amendments. Uh, uh, my uh, argument is that the prosecutor's office uh, should be protected that when the new authorities are coming, they shouldn't be able to, to, to change the prosecutor's office. So for the past six years, we have been uh, observing lots of changes. And so if we have so many amendments, modifications, all of a sudden we will have a new main uh, act uh, and the old acts will become the new ones. Well, I disagree. In my opinion, our constitution Uh, used to be quite modern when it was developed. Uh, at the same time, the uh, constitution of the uh, of the Republic of South Africa was developing its constitutions, and we were helping them. So the constitution that uh, will soon celebrate its 25th anniversary, I think it has worked. And for many uh, years, it has worked until 2015, uh, when the Constitution has been violated. And due to the fact that the world has uh, changed, we have new expectations. So uh, you have presented some proposals. So I would like to repeat access to internet, rights of homeless people, climate change, new technologies. Uh, a, cat a catalog of our changes is expanding. Yes, but we can do it at the level of um, amendments to the Constitution. And we have to uh, really value uh, some uh, the, the Constitution. It has multicultural, multi-religion uh, focused uh, nature. So in Poland, uh, the Constitution has formulated, uh, the, the Constitution's uh, rules 
rules uh, are formulated quite well, in my opinion. And of course, we can be critical of the text. In some situations, uh, the Constitution has uh, has, has provided uh, the feeling of uh, safety. Well, I used to be the ombudsman, and I am very happy that uh, Professor Marcin Wiazek, the current ombudsman, ombudsman uh, was uh, chosen uh, in accordance with the Constitution. And uh, of course, it was a long-lasting process, uh, uh, but the new person, the new ombudsman, ombudsman is an independent uh, person, autonomous person. Uh, when we are looking at the National Audit Office, well, a month ago, uh, the Polish parliament was to vote to take the immunity uh, of, the, um, of the head of the National uh, Chamber of audit. Of course, we can have different reservations, but when we are looking at these constitutional relations, we can feel autonomous. We can feel that the institution is autonomous. So when we are considering changes, I think it's more difficult. We can say we have selected to so to change the constitution. You have to have the majority. Majority. And uh, we it couldn't even think of the majority of 300 MPs when we were talking about veto towards uh, president's uh, decisions. So, in the so to amend the constitution, we will also need uh, the majority. So there are two solutions. One solution is a form of a round table, but I don't know if a Polish political elites are able to agree on this, so we will have to check this. We will have to see what's the situation in Poland after the election. Maybe the conflict will be so deep, maybe there will be some external threats that uh, will contribute to the situation where the government will understand that we have to have a consent, we have to modernize Poland. Poland should be governed in a better way to, to be able to reflect the modern times. So maybe I could think of a space for fixing the Republic of Poland. So I would think of having this round table discussion but uh, now, if I, if I assess the current situation, I think it's 3 to 5 percent of having such a debate. So uh, we will be having uh, the same uh, constitution for many years to come. Uh, the constitutional tribunal uh, will be this uh, authority that will uh, uh, guard the constitution, the president will be filing some amendments, and maybe we will have this fight for quite a few years. So we will have to wait for the time when we are more mature to build majority to amend the constitution. Maybe in the meantime, uh, there will be uh, there will be uh, the need to have a new constitution. But uh, currently, I do not see such a space, but I can see space for very social actions. Uh, we, are celebra we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Constitution. Although it has been violated, maybe uh, we should follow the theme 20 25 uh, uh, years of the Constitution, 25 uh, uh, editions, issues of the Constitution, 25,000 editions uh, of the Constitution could be distributed uh, uh, to, to Poles, uh, because uh, uh, Poles do not have uh, uh, the Constitution uh, on their shelves at home. So. And uh, additionally, there should be debates and meetings in all cities, towns, and municipalities uh, in Poland. A discourse, a discussion about uh, the Constitution is a political act. Still, we have to be brave to continue such efforts. You have mentioned that we need specific majority to amend the Constitution or introduce the, a, a new one. You were talking about uh, uh, the consent which will be done outside of the parties, so you mentioned the first 
first task. So first of all, there should be relationship between the Constitution and the citizens. Citizens should know that Constitution is an important document in their life. So now I'm going to ask you about the thing that will be necessary for the amendment of the Constitution of the new one. So I would like to ask you about the uh, Constitution momentum, so the social consent to develop such a legal act. So this will be a concept uh, uh, developed uh, by Bruce Ackerman, somebody uh, whose ancestor used to live in Woods. So when we have this tribal division in Poland, when politics is perceived as the arena of losers and winners, so either our people win, uh, and then it's not our Poland, or we win, and then it's our Poland. So is there a space to uh, to amend or write a new constitution? First of all, I, I would like to challenge um, Mrs. Marshall, who has said uh, that the beginning of the constitution was strong, and afterwards uh, the efforts have weakened. I can see people nowadays, uh, how they can get mobilized. When I saw the first protest, I think it was the 11th or the 12th December of 2015. Uh, before, I had never imagined that so many people in Poland would have come to Warsaw. So many people uh, would have come out to defend the document that at the time was quite uh, abstractive. Before, we heard of this of the Constitution when uh, there were some extreme circumstances when somebody had to approach the Constitutional um, Tribunal to, to, to uh, fight for their rights. So it, these were not only lawyers, prosecutors who started protesting. There were many, many people. So we have to uh, really value the civic uh, society for this. It's not about the very document. It's about uh, the vision of uh, the country of the rule of law. You, you are protesting to defend the rule of law. And to defend it, people organize themselves. They want, they want to go out to the protest. They want to wear special T-shirts. They confront their friends. Uh, Adam Bodner has mentioned how uh, they follow through the Constitution. Hundreds of people uh, join these events, and it's very impressive. So uh, I think uh, due to Kaczynski, in a way, we have done a lot of work. So this awareness on the importance of, com of the Constitution is growing. So the more it's violated, uh, the more people realize how much constitution is needed. So they realize about the uh, elementary rights and that these rights should be guaranteed. Uh, uh, you remember the, 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 the time when there was the ban on uh, mass meetings. So young people who were protesting uh, uh, since uh, the 22nd of October, October in 2020 to defend uh, women's rights, they, they, uh, they could feel very painfully uh, what violation of constitution is, uh, what, uh, uh, how, how, how bad the constitutional um, tribunal that makes, uh, that violates the Constitution is. You are asking us about uh, uh, the, 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 the arguing uh, tribal Poland. Uh, uh, it's not that everybody here is uh, arguing. There are people who are indifferent. There are people who are angry. There are people who do not want to have this war with the law and justice party. We want to live in symbiosis with them, but they have to observe the law. They have to observe the Constitution. They should not impose their, their ideological vision whenever they feel like it. We mustn't allow them to be authoritarian, but to mobilize a narrow group. It's just enough to shake the political stage, to polarize the, polarize the stage, but it's not effective. If, if in 
where if we were to have a, a referendum on joining the EU, currently it would be much more difficult for Poland to join the EU structures. So the government uh, have all the tools. We can shout at, them, shout at them, we can give them flowers if they deserve flowers, but they impose the standards. They impose violation to the rules of procedure in the parliament. You can see how co courts operate, uh, uh, how, how uh, the, 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 the courts that uh, observe uh, uh, the Constitution work. And then we can see the courts that follow the orders of Ziobro, the Minister of Justice. So the law and justice uh, will continue with the polarization. We, dep we depend on the politics we want to do. So we have to do one thing. It's, of course, it's a big thing. But we have to take the power from law and justice uh, party. But I would like to remind you that when a uh, law and justice party was in opposition, they were also uh, working on this polarization. They wanted it. So uh, the new government and should uh, prevent it. We could see lots of examples that the society is becoming emotional. Macierewicz and Kaczyński were using these emotions, and the government didn't react to this. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about the discussion on Smolensk. Uh, actually, that was the time when one fourth of uh, our of our citizens believed uh, in this um, Smolensk plot. We have to mobilize other people, as Adam Bodnar said. We have to reach everyone else too. The idea on the constitution, on the distributing constitution uh, is great, but I know people who have wonderful, great books at home, but they have never read them. So to have this constitutional moment momentum, we need to teach uh, about constitution at schools. We have to educate people. I, I, I wouldn't count on uh, Minister Czarnek. That's why we want to get rid of them. We don't want them to be our government. Mrs. Marshall. I would like to repeat the question on the social involvement because you are emphasizing it, that you have to engage people, you have to convince them, you have to make them aware. How? What can we do in 2021 when the Law and Justice Party still has uh, two years to go, probably? And uh, Professor Bodnar said that the term of President Duda will continue even if, if in 2023 uh, the Law and Justice Party loses power. So what kind of work is for Professor Bodnar for Mrs. Nowatska for you, for, for media. Well, I have to pose some challenges. I maintain what I have said. Mrs. Nowatska is talking from the perspective of large cities uh, such as Warsaw. I live in Silesia in a district where there are many small towns and villages. And even in such big cities as Warsaw, if you go to Powązki Cemetery, and if there is a Warsaw Uprising anniversary, and if the marshal of the Senate um, can be uh, ridicu ridiculed uh, by the society. I, I, I heard myself that people were whistling uh, when he uh, turned out. It's not a nice, it's a nasty tradition to whistle uh, at cemeteries. Uh, uh, and uh, I don't want to mention the whistles when the footballers, our footballers, uh, uh, extend honor to, to Nazis. We are here. We are very clear which side we support. Our audience who are here with us, uh, our internet audience constitute some 20 percent? Well, the rest, what happens with the rest? There are people who are indifferent, but uh, who really is indifferent? Maybe the, the, the indifference reached uh, people who theoretically could be on our side, because I know many people who said that they were going to start internal immigration. So this is our task. We have to wake these people up. 
there are different methods for this, but I keep repeating. Uh, actually, it's based on Professor Bodnar's uh, statement. We have to reach small towns, villages. We have to reach people who should be ma made aware what constitution, what law is, and why it should be observed. What else can be done? Courts. Courts are starting to um, apply uh, this first control of the rule of law. Professor Wentowska was saying that this control should be exercised by the courts. It's untrue that it's only the constitutional tribunal allowed to, to decide whether a specific provision is against constitution or not. So when when a, a rule, actually it's stated in the Constitution in its Article 8, so we have to learn how to apply the Constitution directly. And courts are able to do this. Of course, it's more difficult. It's more difficult to justify this, but our judges, ingenious judges, have demonstrated that, that they can be against the, the government. So if they really want to uh, take the power from the government. They have to show the citizen that the Constitution is, uh, is very important and they can do it by issuing their verdict. And it started happening. Maybe in the nearest uh, time, if we manage to get rid of the Law and Justice Party, this disparate control of Constitution of, of the constitutionality, maybe during this initial period, the consti this control will replace the constitutional tribunal, at least uh, in the term of application uh, of the faulty provisions. So if we are today optimistic and if we emphasize that uh, that the only priority is to take the power from the law and justice party uh, I don't I don't quite agree with it uh, I think that we should make sure that we have that we have to make sure that uh, law and justice party does not come back of course uh, if this party if the if the party, Law and Justice Party, are in the opposition, they will still interfere uh, with the rule of law. And the civic education is very important. I would like to give the floor to other speakers too. We have to make the citizens aware that, that this over-optimistic statements by the Law and Justice Party that, who say that we have to be strong, homogeneous. Uh, it really works when we're looking at the migra migrants' refugee crisis. Uh, we have to show people uh, that it's only done to maintain this evil authority. We need to educate people. That's true. Minister Czarnek is not helpful. We're nearly closing. Uh, and uh, summary, one minute for everybody, Ms. Novatska. Okay, so just briefly, I will challenge what uh, the speaker said. Uh, it's not uh, the uh, defense of the elites in large cities, it's, uh, but when I look in, in, at people in small towns, in villages, uh, where they hang the EU uh, flag in Podkarpacie or banners uh, of uh, um, politicians, it requires much greater courage. And we have to win with uh, Lauren Justice uh, to build better and fairer Poland with the constitution we have. We have to fight for the rule of law and look forward. Article 18 should be corrected, amended as quickly as possible so that uh, all of us can be happy. Thank you uh, very much for everything you do to defend the rule of law. Professor, I would like to use the last minute to tell what should be done answering the facilitator's question. Three issues. 
first and foremost, we should make everybody aware why constitutional values are important. Teaching constitutionalism, teaching through uh, technology, activity on the local level and through the activity of local authorities. A lot can be done here, not depending on uh, schools, but uh, taking different local initiatives. The second aspect is the maximum creative in involvement in taking advantage of the political freedoms that nobody has uh, deprived us of. Depending on how we fill them with content depends on us. I mean the freedom of speech, speech, freedom of association, the right for petition, the right for public information access, and uh, fighting for uh, the transparency of authority. There is still a lot to do. Regardless of the gaps, regardless of the divisions, we should take the initiatives which, at least on the level of ideas or collaboration, could uh, backfill the ditches, the gaps. Kuba Wagnański from the Stocznia Foundation is doing a great job. He has developed a program telling how to do it and how to select the topics that actually refer to the constitutional values but apply to us all and are development issues for everybody. Po uh, energy poverty, climate change, education, the rights for health protection. These topics can be discussed together in order to prepare new solutions for future Poland and such bridges between uh, different uh, ideological milieus could be could grant better future for Poland. Ms. Uh, speaker. As for article 18, I want to say that it does not really disturb what we would like to do. Many lawyers uh, expressed it does not uh, contradict uh, single-sex marriages. It can be done on the fundamental level. I don't want to repeat uh, what Professor Bodner said because I do agree with him. I would add the role of media here. Citizens showed recently great solidarity with free media. I'm not sure whether it was because they understood that the freedom of speech, that the freedom of access to information is the guarantee of our freedom. Everybody defended free media. These were NGOs, civic organizations and protests in the streets. But now there is a tremendous role for free media because they reach every single house on a daily basis. Independent journalists have the great power to get involved in showing to the society or educating the society by inviting their guests how important Constitution is for every citizen. Thank you very much. Our time is up. Our panelists included Gabriela Morawska Stanecka, Barbara Nowacka, and Adam Bodnar. Thank you very much for being with us and enjoy the rest of, the, of your Sunday in the Freedom Games. Thank you. It's not always easy to recognize. It may look like this, or like this. It may be a burden, but it is a responsibility that we embrace nonetheless. But if it means this for one person and this for someone else, maybe it ultimately means 
being there for one another. It isn't handed to us, but we know where to find it and how it feels, how it tastes, and what it sounds like when we finally have it. It means different things to different people, but for many, it means everything. And if we all fight for it, it will eventually bring us together. Work is different now. We're commuting less, virtually meeting more. Separating work life and life life can feel challenging. It's easy to forget that to thrive at work, we need to take care of ourselves. Microsoft Viva Insights offers new experiences to balance productivity and well being. Personal insights help you stay at your best and most productive. Add structure to your remote workday by opting for a virtual commute, carving out time to have a productive start in the morning and mindfully disconnect in the evening. Protect time before your calendar fills up for focused work, coaching, and learning. Take regular mental breaks with Headspace, tapping into dedicated moments of mindfulness. Use emotional check-ins to tune into your day-to-day -day mindset and well-being. Strengthen team bonds with stay connected experiences that prompt you to praise collaborators, schedule one-on-ones, and follow up on pending commitments and outstanding tasks. Insights for managers and leaders offer windows into how work happens and the impact on employee well-being. Identify where teams may be isolated and take action to break down silos. Quickly discover opportunities to prevent burnout, promote coaching and development, and boost engagement. You and your team's well-being is important, especially in times of change. Taking care of one another allows you to thrive and your organization to build resilience. Experience how new well-being insights in Viva can help. Liberté Talks. To, co ważne. Seria Liberté Talks realizowana jest dzięki wsparciu Google oraz Państwa darowizną. Na podcast Podcast z Finokem zaprasza Jakub Wiech.